Hello, I'm Cody Short, and I am an astrodynamic software engineer here at AGI. Um, I'm also the uh, lead developer for our Astrogator um, module for the, the systems toolkit software that we produce. And I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about a, a feature that we're really excited about, um, a native implementation of the circular restricted three-body problem uh, for Astrogator in SDK. Um, and so we're going to go into a, a little bit of detail for that here and just kind of give you some pointers and some tips and tricks for how you can get up and running with this model. Um, so on the screen, you see a, a view of the Earth and a uh, fictitious third body called Luna. I'll go into detail of why we're doing that, but kind of the classical representation of the libration points associ associated with that Earth-Moon sort of system. Um, we show a, an, an orbit here, it's a, a Lyapunov orbit about the, the L1 libration point. Um, so let me talk a little bit more about some of the details associated with this. So previously you might have been able to do something similar with an SDK. You could potentially implement a third body perturbation. So you could have, say, for example, Earth um, and the Moon and the Moon on its actual orbit being acting as a third body perturbation. Um, the challenges associated with that if you want to do three body problem analysis uh, for like the circular restricted three body problem is that you don't have the actual mathematical model to do it. You don't have the autonomous dynamical system. And so if you don't have that, you can't take advantage of some of the nice things that that system presents from the mathematics perspective. And so what we've done is add a direct implementation of the model, the mathematics, um, the equations of motion into SDK. Uh, and this involves some transformations between SDK di dimensional inertial states and three-body problem rotating non-dimensional states uh, as needed. It, it reflects directly the autonomous dynamical system features um, when you include that three-body problem force model on your propagator. Um, but we also allow, which is kind of a unique thing, is if you want to do the three-body analysis, but you also want to pull in something else like SRP, um, we're also allowing the inclusion of other forces. So you, then you have this potential of doing the typical dynamical systems modeling that you might do with the circular restricted three-body problem, but you can also take advantage of the modularity of Astrogator following existing Astrogator patterns. Um, in order for the three-body problem to work, though, it's, it's this sort of uh, lower fidelity model that allows you to do the nice dynamical systems theory stuff. Um, but you have to have the appropriate system to do that. You have to have the circular restricted problem. Uh, and, and that means you have to have a model where you have two gravitation sources um, and they evolve on circular orbits about their common barycenter. Or, for example, in our case, um, the, the secondary in this case would be a fictitious moon orbits on a circle about, this, um, about the Earth. Um, and for that to work, you have to configure that appropriately. And so uh, for the time being, users would configure their secondary body consistent with those definitions, uh, meaning you have to uh, define a body that's orbiting on a circular orbit, has a desired distance from your primary, um, and it has an appropriate secondary mass. Um, and that is all defined consistently with the mathematics of the circular restricted three-body problem. And so depending on your system, you might have to create this uh, fictitious body for now. So for example, in the previous slide, we showed a picture where we had Luna taking the place of the moon uh, for like an Earth-Moon circular restricted three-body problem system. So we have plans to make that easier for users. But for now, um, I'm going to show you kind of some of the things that go into that by going directly into SDK um, and showing you a scenario associated with this type of analysis. So. Here I have my SDK open, um, and in the 3D graphics viewer, we see um, a Lyapunov orbit about the L1 libration point. And you can see, at this particular time, my fictitious moon Luna is, oper is orbiting on a circular orbit. Um, and this is the path here in white that you see. And the real moon is over here, turned on, just for kind of comp comparison. So if we're at the same semi-major axis for the circular radius, um, if we use the semi-major axis of the moon for the circular radius of our lunar orbit, it actually puts us on a circle like this. So you can see that at this point, the moon is actually, um, it's, it's more out towards apogee, or it's, it's further away than, uh, than it would be close. Um, and so then we have our L1 libration point associated with our earth Luna system, and a Lyapunov orbit that we've corrected using Astrogator's differential corrector, um, and then validated against other external implementations of the three-body problem. Um, and so what you could do with this then is basically uh, directly integrate um, solutions that you might find for the three-body problem, uh, find solutions, and then also compute 
values associated with that. So in this case, we have an orbit that starts here uh, along the rotating x-axis and returns to the x-axis, and then we have the second half of the orbit in red. Some of the things that help with this analysis then are, again, as I mentioned previously, you do need to have an appropriately configured um, central body or, or your secondary body. So here I have Luna in the component browser, uh, which has been, it's a duplicate of another central body and then configured consistent with the parameters of the moon in terms of gravity, in terms of its shape. Um, and then the orbit is specified with, um, with analytic parameters saying, I, here's my semi-major axis. That's the radius of the circle that I want for that orbit. Um, some of the initial parameters that I took from the moon at that particular epoch. And then all of the rates of these uh, orbital elements are all zero, except for the actual, um, the, the rate that causes the orbit of the moon, the circular motion. So this is essentially your mean motion or, or the rate of your mean longitude. Uh, and so that's the one thing that, that determines what that, the rate of your system is. Um, and this is all starts at some epoch that we specify. So there's my, my um, fictitious moon to so support the analysis. And then uh, some other things that you might need to do then, or you might want to do, uh, is to build up some of your own coordinate systems and points and things uh, that you might do with analysis workbench. So here I've uh, created, I've added the Earth Luna Berry Center, and I added the Earth Luna uh, Circular Restricted Problem System in terms of its axes and things. Um, that's just for me to be able then to go into Astrogator and specify an initial state in those coordinates and uh, that sort of thing. Um, but those are pieces that help with that analysis. So those are a few things then, I guess, that kind of help with how you would approach this problem. Um, and those are things that, that we have plans to, to actually make easier for people by, um, by adding some tools and widgets to do that. Uh, but that'll be coming later. Um, so we're excited to bring this to you now, uh, help people that are, are already doing these sorts of things and help them get better results and, and do the analysis directly with an SDK. And so, pop back here. I like the picture, so. Um, thank you for, for tuning in and um, you can always let us know if you, you have questions by contacting our support people um, and always like to hear from people. So, um, thanks.